How you doing? My name is Steve Kittrell, and uh, we are Veloce Evaluations, an automotive appraisal and consulting firm, and we do collection management. So welcome to the collection. Um, we are here at the Monterey Regional Airport at my airport hangar, and these are some of the cars that we manage and uh, take care of full time. As you can see, we're kind of Ferrari centric here, uh, which is my personal passion. I've been involved in the Ferrari world uh, for over 15 years and uh, absolutely love it and very pleased to take care of some of these wonderful examples. Um, as you can see right in front of us, we have the 348 Challenge car. Uh, this is one of the factory kit cars that was uh, made after the Challenge series started in the US in 1994. Um, so this car was born out of the need to kind of capture that Ferrari audience that was feverish in the early 1990s and the start and the birth of the Challenge Series that we kind of know so well. Um, the Challenge Series was started in Europe as a Dutch car collecting group of Ferraris decided to want to go out and do some track racing. Ferrari acknowledged this and decided, hey, let's capture that audience, let's build a kit for them, and let's create this series that we know have gone to 355, 360, and beyond. Uh, so this car here is kind of in that dual purpose mode at the moment. It's street legal, which is fantastic, but it's also prepared for the track. Um, we do see features in the car, such as um, uh, the Challenge race seats, seat belts, um, and some other features that kind of make it really special for the track and much more usable as a 348. So in 1994, the Ferrari 348 Challenge Series did come to the U.S. and its first race was in February of 94 in Florida as part of the world-renowned Concours of the Cavallino Classic. These were only North American spec cars and they were built by the factory. There was 32 TBs, 13 TSs, which makes a total of 45 factory built challenge cars. Now this car was fitted with the factory kit, as I kind of mentioned before, a challenge kit. And it did race in a, a number of challenge series races, including Italy and a couple of podium finishes at Moroso Motorsports Park in Florida. The car then went into the Evergreen Historic Automobile Collection and was shown at the Cavalino Classic as a Platinum Concours winner. The car was then purchased by our collection here and has just been spiritedly raced and driven here on the Monterey Peninsula since. So what really makes this car cool is it is dual purpose. So it is street legal and it's ready to go for the racetrack. But what's interesting about this Challenge Series versus Challenge Series after it is that it does have all the car elements of a street car. So you have door panels, you have AC, you have power windows, which you just wouldn't have. You have carpet, uh, which just wouldn't come in a 355 or 360. But as you can see, it does have the OMP original race seat in it. It does have the race seat belts from period. This car currently doesn't have the roll cage fitted and some other elements, but it does have the Speedline wheels and all the other factory upgrades that would have been offered through Ferrari. So my favorite car to drive in the collection is definitely the 2004 Ferrari 360 Challenge Stradale. So they only made 1,288 of these examples, which came after the 360 Modena and the 360 Spider. Again, Ferrari wanting to make a special class of car out of each of their base models. This thing's really fantastic. Uh, it's the first car to use an all aluminum space age chassis, which is like 40% lighter, and you could definitely feel it on the road. It's got a six speed F1 gearbox, uh, Alcantara interior, carbon fiber seats, no frills, don't turn on the radio, just get on it and have a good time. It's got the tricolor up front, classic um, Ferrari red, and everybody loves this car, especially me. Uh, this car is also very special. This might look like a normal 430, um, but it's not. It's the 16M, which is, again, Ferrari's special uh, low production example of their base model. 
Now the 16M, they only made 499. This is the 400th built out of that 499. Uh, black, black, again, same thing. Uh, stripped down interior, um, carbon fiber seats. And this is kind of nice. You can put the top up and pop top down. So here on the Monterey Peninsula, when the fog rolls in, you can have the top up, but then you get out in Carmel Valley and you can pull the top down and, and really get on it. This car looks great, sounds great, and we love managing this car as well. Um, another car that we manage here is the Ferrari Testarossa. Now this is the 512 TR, which is uh, another lower production uh, car from the Testarossa. And this is one of the best examples I've ever had my hands on. A 15,000 mile, red over tan, immaculately taken care of by current ownership. And this one's fun. We have a, a pilot who owns this car. So he flies right into the Monterey airport, drives over, picks up his car, takes it for a couple days, drops it off, and then takes off again in his plane. So uh, one of the benefits and joys of being here uh, at the airport. So one of the cars I'm uh, sad to see leave the collection is this 1971 De Tomaso Pantera. This is a car that we just pulled out of a 30 year hibernation in a garage in Santa Cruz. It had been parked since 1991. Um, we got the call about the car, saved it from the barn, uh, and kind of got the car back together in, in a state that we knew exactly what we had. The engine and the motor were pulled from the car. They're all going um, to the Czech Republic as the car just got sold and is gonna be restored back to its original configuration. It is a rare L-series car small bumpers, uh, California plates, a California car from new. And we just love being the caretakers and being able to save this car. It's something that we do. And uh, we're happy to get those calls and we're happy to see this car go off to another good collection. So we do have some turnover in our collection, but some of the staples that stay here are some of our personal cars. Uh, the Alfa Romeos are, are definitely staying. 74 GTV, a 67 step nose, and another Okra step nose over here. The 308 GT4 is part of the collection and gets driven regularly. Um, this car is just about to go in for a major service, so this car is staying as well. A 355 GTB with an F1 gearbox. We love this car and everyone seems to love Fly Yellow. Looks great out on the road. Uh, 94 Porsche RS America. I hope this car stays for a long time. Uh, fully restored up here at Canapa in Scotts Valley. It's perfect and probably one of the best examples that you can find. You'll see other cars that are located on our storage racks here. Uh, 300 SL Roadster, um, 930 Turbo, the Maserati Ghibli Spider. That's a great car as well. And a number of other cars that either get uh, turned over and moved in and out or they stay here for more of a permanent home. So I want to thank you guys for coming to the collection. Thank you, thank you to the Peterson Automotive Museum. I absolutely love the Peterson and the people involved there. They've been nothing but wonderful to me over the years. I can't wait to visit again now that they're open. Um, again, we're Veloce Valuations here in Monterey, California. Happy to serve you in any way that we can. Um, follow us at Veloce Valuations, same as the website. Again, I'm Steve. Thank you so much. Come back soon.